Good morning, everybody. I want to use this opportunity to say thank God to our General Overseer, Dr. Cosmos Lechuku, and our Regional Overseer, Pastor Joseph Mesa, for this year's Intercessors Camp and for the privilege of bringing the first teaching for the Southwest. The title of this very brief exhortation is God's will that your joy may be full. We are essentially here to pray. That's why the exhortation will be brief. God's will that your joy may be full. God desires that your joy will be complete at all times. That is his will. So the purpose of this exhortation is that you may experience joy and indeed exceeding joy in today's world that is full of troubles and trials and tribulations. God would expect that in these troubled times you will have triumphant joy. So triumphant joy is your portion in the name of Jesus. In the midst of this evil generation, he is giving you the oil of gladness. In this evil generation, there is divine triggers of joy awaiting you in his presence. In the presence of God, he's releasing for you angelic interventions for joy. Your joy will know no end in the name of Jesus. We don't need to deal with situations around us and key our lives into what we see and what we hear and allow our lives to be molded by them. If you will pick up today's headline newspaper, you are likely going to find things like unknown gunmen. Another may tell you bandits, killing, raping, kidnapping. Another will tell you there is Boko Haram ravaging in one village or the other. Kidnappers along one highway or the other. Armed robbers either dealing with one bank or dealing with one estate. Ritualist then, another one has been found in an exclusive place. These are the things that kill joy, and God does not want that. At times, you discover that those headlines talk about ghastly accidents on our pothole roads, suicide, suicide bombers and rapes. All these are all over the place. And uh, in the midst of all this, God wants us to be joyful. He wants to give us exceeding joy. So I want to pick a text from John chapter 16, verse 24 and verse 33. I read from the New King James Version, John chapter 16, verse 24. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. 33. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Until now, that is, before you come to Jesus, before you come to ask, from him, there is trouble everywhere. Now you can ask and receive so that your joy may be full. Early in my Christian life, I heard, you know, some Christians sing a song. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy home, happy, happy home. If you want to experience joy and happiness in your home, it is Jesus. I didn't like the other portion when Satan is in the family, trouble everywhere. We are concerned with Jesus being there and our asking him to give us peace. In the midst of trouble, Jesus Christ is assuring us in verse 33 of John 16, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have 
peace in the world, you will have tribulation. You have a choice to make. Either to remain with the world and have tribulations and trials, or to remain with Jesus, and then you will have peace. And he adds, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The world and the system thereof is designed in such a way that there will be trouble. There are troublers of this world. But Jesus, in the midst of it all, says, we should cheer up. He has overcome this world. Jesus is the only one that can give us peace. Remember, our message is God's will that your joy may be full. He does not want you to look at the situations around you. He doesn't want you to look at the circumstances around you. He wants you to look unto him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The one you look at is the one you resemble. If you look unto Jesus, the Prince of Peace, you will resemble him and your life will be like, you know, uh, Jesus' life full of peace. When you look at the world that is full of trouble, I pray you don't do that. Then such person's life will also be full of trouble. So learn to ask. Learn to recognize that Jesus is the peace that you need. Learn to know that in this world there are tribulations, but we have to be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome all these things. So in a time like this, where do we turn to? We turn to Jesus. Proverbs 18.10 The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. That name is Jesus. The name of the Lord God Almighty. At the mention of that name, kneels bow. Kneels of troubles, kneels of tribulations. Kneels of things that, you know, make the world, you know, to cring in fear. Certainly in this world, there will be troubles. Christ has assured us. Say, so, but be of good cheer. Because Jesus is in our boat, we are sure that that boat can't capsize. The issue of whether there will be turbulence, whether there will be waves or not, certainly there will be troubles. Let's look at Mark chapter 4, verse 38 to 40. But he was in the stern asleep in a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Jesus certainly was in the boat. But his presence did not spare the boat from the storms. Just as the presence of Jesus in your life will not spare your life from you know, the troubles and the storms of this life. But there is assurance that if Jesus is there, that boat will not capsize. Jesus in your family means that that marriage will survive the storms of life. Jesus in your business means that no matter the troubles that that business passes through, that business will stand. That relationship will not collapse because Jesus is there. Make sure that Jesus travel with you in the seas of life and learn to call on him. In the raging storm, they ask this question. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? How many ask that question today? Learn to ask that question. Lord, here is my son. Here is my daughter. Here is what is happening to me. Don't you care? And if you will hear the voice of the master, he will tell you, sure, I am here. He rebuked the storm. Today, he still rebukes storms when we call on him. At the middle of the night, at that zero hour, when nobody can offer help, 
When have seems far away, the doctor seems far away, the uncle seems far away, call Jesus. I knew a man in my church many years ago. His name is Paul. In the middle of the night, a crisis arose and the wife was dying. All he could do was to call Jesus. Started calling Jesus. Started calling Jesus. The neighbors knew that there was trouble and they came banging on the door. Paul opened for us. He said, please help me call Jesus. Help me call Jesus. He never opened the door and continued to call Jesus. And Jesus, being the miracle worker, showed up and his wife was restored and revived. Don't allow people to cry over your spilled milk. Call Jesus. As many as I call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Nobody called that name Jesus and is disappointed. Learn to call that name now and always. He's the solution in all that we need. In this world, there are troubles. In Christ, there is peace. The reason is because he is the prince of peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. In this place, we read, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He is all of these wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. If there is a title or a name of Jesus that we need to call today, it is his name as the prince of peace. Anytime you call a name, the name of a person, that person responds. When you call John, Matthew doesn't respond. John responds. So when you call the Prince of Peace, trouble doesn't respond. And your family learn to call the Prince of Peace. That marriage will survive as you call the Prince of Peace. The so-called irreconcilable differences will got reconciled when you call the Prince of Peace. Prepare a room for him. This is the season of Christmas. I will always say, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let it receive her King. Are you receiving him? Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Let every heart prepare a room for Jesus. When that one happens, then there will be peace everywhere. Since Jesus is the Prince of Peace, how can we experience peace in Christ? Five ways in which we can experience peace in Christ. Five ways in which we can experience exceeding joy in the Lord. Number one, recognize that in Him, in Jesus, we have peace. Not outside of Jesus. In Christ, we have peace. Don't look for peace outside of Christ. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justification is when we are made right with God because we have faith in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. When we put our trust in him, then God justifies us. He imputes unto us the righteousness that is of Christ. He takes away our sin, that substitution, takes away our sins, and we take upon ourselves, or rather, he gives unto us the righteousness that is in Christ. When that one happens, peace become ours. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. 
Before now, we are enemies of God. But Christ is the peacemaker. He comes so that our relationship with God may be cordial. Number two, I'm talking about how to experience peace in Christ. The first one is that in him we have peace. Secondly, in the circumstances of life, Jesus gives peace. The first one is that he himself in him will find peace. Secondly, in the circumstances of life, Jesus Christ gives us peace. We'll read John chapter 16, verse 33. And uh, we we'll also follow it up with Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Let me just read Philippians chapter 4, 6 to 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious about anything. Deliberately choose not to be anxious. Whatever it is, don't be anxious about anything. How will the school fees be paid? Don't be anxious about that. I'm approaching 30 and no man is coming to make a proposal. Don't be anxious about that. Three years after I have left the university, no job. Don't be anxious about anything. What will happen to my deteriorating head? Don't be anxious about anything. But with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. Have you prayed about it? It's not the issue of whether you are passing through those things. Have you prayed about it? Why worry? Worry, worry, worry when you can pray. That's why we're in the intercessor's camp. You shouldn't worry when you can pray. Tell it to Jesus. Any time we take our request to Jesus, he takes care of us. We come, we sing, we pray, but do we believe in these prayers? Do we know that Christ can handle it? Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Any time we carry our burdens to God in prayer, he takes care of us. We also discover thirdly that Jesus is the source of peace in your family. Your family certainly will stand. I decree that every troubler of your home will crumble before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. In Romans chapter 14, verse 19, we read, Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. When we pursue peace and we pursue the things that are related to peace, then we can have peace in our homes. We can have peace everywhere. And uh, fourthly, the peace that rules your heart comes from Jesus. Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rules your heart, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the peace of Jesus rule your heart. It's deliberate. It's a choice. Some can choose that that peace will rule. Some can choose to panic and to worry. And some people, uh, for them as a lifestyle, it looks better when they are fidgeting, when they are telling everybody that the world around me is crumbling. They want people to pity them. No. Take charge. 
Know that since Jesus is there, those troubles and tribulations will crumble. Jesus is there. So let your heart be at peace. Let it rule your heart. And fifthly, I'm talking about the five ways in which you can experience peace in Christ. Number five, Jesus is the source of eternal peace. The peace that lasts. The peace that lasts. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, we have read verse 6. You know, previously when we talk about Jesus being the Prince of Peace, verse 7 says, Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Which means this peace is something that is always on the increase. You can have peace. You can have more peace. You can have exceeding peace. The peace of God that comes to you is commensurate to the troubles that comes your way. There's always enough peace that can overcome those troubles. You can't tell me that these troubles are so much that I have lost the peace of God. No. There will always be enough amount, if I may say that, of peace that can you know, help you overcome. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. It's an enduring one. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward for even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. It is not a transient peace. It's not peace that does not last. It's peace that lasts forever. Peace that lasts forever. So we can be sure that when we are in Christ, we can always have this peace and we can have crisis. Jesus Christ is the solution to the crisis of life. When you have Jesus, you can be sure that you can live in peace and you are safe. But outside of Christ, you can't be safe. How to experience joy in times of trouble? You may be asking, Pastor, in a time like this, how can I experience peace? There seems to be trouble everywhere. So how do I experience peace? Number one, have the knowledge of God. If you have the knowledge of God, then you can experience peace. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. Those who do wickedly against the covenant shall... Sorry. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flatteries. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. They that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. They shall do exploits. So if you are talking about experiencing joy in times of tribulations, know that in God, this is possible. Just be strong and you will do exploits. The NIV says, you will firmly resist him. Contemporary English version says, you will do everything possible to oppose him. Whatever is bringing tribulations, whatever is bringing troubles, whatever is bringing trials, with your knowledge of God, knowing who God is and what he is to you, you can always resist the troublemaker and it will be done. You can't know joy outside of Jesus. You can't know peace outside of Jesus. Tell me your joy if you don't know Jesus. Tell me your joy. Tell me your joy. Tell me your joy if you don't know Jesus. Oh, tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Oh, my brother, tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Oh, my sister, tell me. Tell me. Tell me, you don't know Jesus, you don't know peace. When you know Jesus, 
then you know peace. I saw it written somewhere. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. The first one is no Jesus. K-N-O-W. That's knowledge. No Jesus, then you know peace. The second one, no Jesus, no peace. N-O. No Jesus, no peace. If you want to find peace, you have to have a knowledge of Jesus. If that knowledge is absent, N-O, then there is no peace. No Jesus, no peace. Secondly, intimacy with God. The closer you are with God, the more peace you have. Because it's the source. The closer you are to the source of light, the brighter it is. The closer you are to the source of peace, the more peace you experience. When Jesus is there with you in the morning, is there with you in the no time, is there with you in the evening, you are always having intimate communion. You are sure to experience peace. Number three, in Christ Jesus alone lies our peace. Only him. In Isaiah chapter 53, we we'll read at verse 4 and 5. Remember, Christ alone is the one that gives us peace. Surely, that's Isaiah 53, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. There is affliction, there is sorrow, there is grief, but he bore all of them for us. So that sorrow that you are carrying, that grief, that you are bearing, all of them has been laid upon him. It is enough for one person to carry the body. If one person does, then the second person will not need to carry that body again. In my first published book, God's Blessing Revealed, was the story of one lady called Odwek. At the times when lorries were coming to that town for the very first time, the villagers were used to going to the market carrying their wares on their head. So Odwek paid the fare and entered, you know, the the boss it was actually, you know, a, a big glory, he entered the big glory. And on her head, she carried, you know, her tomato. And the vehicle was going here and there until one of the passengers accosted her and said, Why are you carrying your tomato on the head? He said, Please, I will get to the market very soon. This uh, lorry is now helping us. So it's enough for this lorry to carry me. So why should I bother this lorry again with my load? As long as you are inside that lorry, it is carrying both you and your load. So some of us are in Christ and we are not casting our cares and our bodies upon him. Ah, it's enough that I'm saved. It's enough that I'm born again. Cast your cares upon him. Because if you cast your cares upon him, he will take care of you. There is no trouble that you are passing through that Jesus Christ have not carried. So why should two of you carry? If a debt has been paid for, the debtor doesn't need to pay again if it was paid on his behalf. He paid on my behalf and your behalf. So don't carry those burdens, don't carry those sorrows again. Number four, 
learn to trust and obey the Lord. If it tells you it is finished, accept it that it is finished. If it tells you that my will is that you prosper and be in health, accept that it is like that. It is not what we do or fail to do. It's all about Jesus. Many of us seem to trust the Lord with our hearts. We have given our life to Christ. But the day-to-day -day ruling over of our lives, we are still in control. No. If Jesus is in charge of your vehicle, allow him to handle the steering. Two captains <laughs> driving the same car, that car is likely going to get involved in an accident. Let one person be in the steering. It will always work like that. From today, I want you to put your trust in him. There is this hymn I love so much, trust and obey. Because if you trust and obey him, then you will certainly survive. One of the stanzas goes this way. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his by quickly drives it away. Not a doubt, nor a fear, not a sign, not a cheer, can abide why we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy with Jesus, but to trust and obey. There is no doubt, there is no fear, there is no sign, there is no tear. None of those things can abide if we trust and obey. Anytime there is a trust in Jesus and there is obedience to his spirit, then we are sure that tears will be absent. We'll be sure that fear will be absent. We'll be sure that the cloud in the sky will be bright one more time. Fifthly, endurance. If we endure, we are sure that those tribulations will give way. We read as Psalm 30, verse 5, the second part, that weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So whatever you are passing through now, it will certainly fizzle out. Just stay long enough in God's presence. Just stay long enough calling on the name of the Lord. As you continue to do that, you will discover that the enemy have no option than to quit. We'll spend some time praying before the person who is going to lead us in prayer takes over. Two or three prayers I want us to pray this morning as we stand to our feet is this. I want you to invoke the joy of the Holy Spirit upon your life. So open your mouth and invoke the joy of the Holy Spirit over your life. Holy Spirit of God, I call on you this morning. I invoke your joy upon my life. Let the joy of the Holy Spirit envelop me. That from this moment henceforth, as I relate with the Holy Spirit, he will engineer joy inside of me. Let the communion with the Spirit of the Almighty bat me in joy. All that concerns me, Spirit of the living God, let it be joy all over. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Secondly, let's pray that every joy killer in your life, in my life, will be pulled down. According to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 10, pulling down, destroying, casting down. In the name 
Above all names, I command every joy killer in your life to be pulled down, to be scattered, to be overthrown. Lekato Liglaha City, those killers of joy, they cannot stand. They cannot withstand the blast of God. Let the power of God overcome every joy killer in your life in the name of Jesus. Wherever they are, wherever they are coming from, in the name above all names, we resist you. We command your powers to crumble in the lives of men in this place in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you have helped us in the name of Jesus. Thirdly, let's pray that joy we envelop all that is yours. Let joy envelop your family. Let joy of, uh, envelop, you know, your local parish, your business enterprise. If you are a student, let joy overrun you in every or such aspect. Father, we thank you for the joy that comes from heaven. Let it envelop my family. My family shall continue to experience joy. Whatever troubles there may be, O oh Lord, we know that in you we overcome. Lord, in our local parish, we thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you for every other parish in CRM. We pray, O oh God, for communal relationship amongst brethren. We pray, O oh God, for communal relationship among pastors and core group members. Whatever brings trouble in churches and scattered churches shall not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Lord, in our various businesses, what we do from day to day, we are asking, O oh God, that your peace will rule over us. Thank you, Father, for we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue to stand as the person who is leading us in prayer comes up. God bless you.